There are reports that Israel and Lebanon are getting close to agreeing to a ceasefire. CNN just reported a few minutes ago that Israel agrees in principle. I should say Israel and Hezbollah are close to agreeing to a ceasefire. The Lebanese government is just there as a middleman. In the Middle East, when you see reports that the two sides are getting close to a ceasefire, what this usually means is that there are massive amounts of fire. It's always darkest before it's totally black. This is what's been happening over the past day. So far today, Hezbollah has fired more than 20 rockets into Israel. A man was wounded from shrapnel. Yesterday, Hezbollah fired 250 rockets at Israeli cities and towns in northern and central Israel. A number of civilians were wounded in these attacks. Israel continues to strike Hezbollah targets in Lebanon, including in the capital city of Beirut. Hezbollah is deeply entrenched in Beirut. Israel gives warning before striking Hezbollah buildings, which is why you see people filming the buildings from a safe distance in Beirut. Will there be a ceasefire with Hezbollah? Hezbollah is down, but not out. Hezbollah has suffered major blows to its leadership, but Hezbollah continues to bombard Israel with rockets and drones. A terrorist army that can fire 250 rockets a day at Israeli cities and towns is not a terrorist army on the verge of collapse. Right now, the 60,000 Israelis who fled their homes in northern Israel last year because Hezbollah was shooting at their homes, they cannot return because Hezbollah continues to shoot at their homes. The people of Israel want this war to be the last war. We do not need another ceasefire or UN resolution. We need peace. Wars should end with peace. Lebanon should make peace with Israel. Hezbollah wants to fight another day. Hezbollah wants more wars. The Iranian regime wants to give Hezbollah more weapons and more money so that it can keep attacking the people of Israel. That's why Israel demands freedom of action in Lebanon, even if there is a ceasefire. Right now, one of the reported problems with the ceasefire agreement is that the French government wants to be on the oversight committee that will monitor the implementation of the agreement. The French government sides with Israel's enemies. France has consistently voted against Israel in the United Nations. After the International Criminal Court issued arrest warrants for Netanyahu and Gallant, the French government indicated that Netanyahu and Gallant could be arrested if they enter France. U.S. President Joe Biden reportedly told French President Emmanuel Macron that it's not possible for the French government to mediate a deal in Lebanon at the same time that the French government says it will arrest the prime minister of one of the parties of the conflict. Is that fair? This is what Israel wants the whole world to know. Israel will never again allow a terrorist army to mobilize on its borders. Hezbollah cannot be allowed to regroup, rearm, and redeploy. Unfortunately, there is no Lebanese force or UN force that is willing to disarm Hezbollah. The Lebanese government failed. The UN failed. The French failed. Diplomacy failed. The government of Lebanon should take responsibility for the future of Lebanon. The UN should help the Lebanese government take control of all of Lebanon. There's no sign that this will happen. The Lebanese government sees any step toward disarming Hezbollah as a civil war in Lebanon. In a way, they're right. Hezbollah is going to fight anyone who tries to disarm it. Hezbollah means party of God in Arabic. They aren't in the business of compromising. Hezbollah fighters are Shia Muslim extremists. They believe that their religion commands them to destroy Israel. Hezbollah wants to fight Israel and anyone else who stands in Hezbollah's way. Hezbollah takes its orders from the Iranian regime. It's part of Iran's ring of fire that surrounds Israel. On October 8th, 2023, one day after the October 7th massacre, Hezbollah opened a second front against Israel. Hezbollah saw what Hamas did on October 7th and liked it. Hezbollah went to war for Hamas. It remains to be seen if Hezbollah is willing to end its war for Hamas. We need more pressure on the Iranian regime so that it cannot fund its forever war against Israel. A word about the Gaza front. Winter is coming. 101 hostages remain in Hamas terror dungeons in Gaza. The ones who are still alive, will they survive the winter? Will we see a sign of life from them? Will the Red Cross try to find them? Will Palestinians call for their immediate and unconditional release? 
it seems like the answer to all of these questions is no. Hamas does not regret its decision to take hostages at all. Hamas has many powerful friends in the world, like Qatar, Turkey, and Iran, who are urging Hamas to keep the hostages. The reason that there is still a war in Gaza is because Hamas continues to fight and Hamas continues to hold hostages. The war will end when Hamas lays down its weapons and releases the hostages. If the so-called friends of the Palestinian people around the world would demand that Hamas surrender, we could end this war a lot faster and begin to build a better future for everyone. As Hamas continues to fight, Israel continues with its efforts to reduce the harm to non-combatants in Gaza. The IDF continues to facilitate the transfer of humanitarian aid into Gaza, food, water, medicine, medical equipment, shelter equipment, and fuel for critical infrastructure, such as hospitals, water pumping facilities, and bakeries. Who do you think takes the humanitarian aid first? Hamas takes it. If anyone else tries to take it, Hamas shoots them. There are armed gangs in Gaza that have hijacked aid trucks. Hamas is trying to stop this from happening. Hamas is like a mafia. Hamas wants to take the aid for itself, so Hamas can continue to supply its terrorists and continue to sell the aid to people in need and raised vast sums of money in the process. We can only hope that the hostages get some of the food. Hamas wants to reestablish control over aid deliveries so it can use the profits to rebuild its terrorist army and take over Gaza again. Hamas wants to be the government of Gaza. Hamas wants control of border crossings. Hamas wants to be in power in Gaza so that it can fulfill its pledge to carry out more October 7th style attacks again and again and again until Israel is destroyed. All of the international aid agencies in Gaza are pressuring Israel to return to this arrangement. It's up to all of us to say with a clear voice, no, we aren't going back to October 6th. Let's take some questions from people watching live on our social media, whether on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, please. Thank you, Daniel. Our first question is from Instagram. Can you please speak about the latest developments regarding the Chabad rabbi who was killed in the UAE? Yes, this is a horrifically tragic incident that took place in the UAE. A local Chabad rabbi went missing. His body was found about 100 kilometers away from where he was last seen in Abu Dhabi. He was found in Al Ain. According to the latest reports, the UAE has arrested three suspects. It remains to be seen exactly who was responsible. There were early reports that the Iranian regime was responsible for hiring the hitmen. There were reports that some suspects fled to Turkey. The facts are not totally clear, but what we're witnessing is the aftermath of a tragic incident in which a rabbi was hunted down and killed inside a country that is doing more than any other country in the region to build bridges with Israel. The United Arab Emirates was the first to sign the Abraham Accords. This is a peace and normalization agreement between the UAE and Israel that we are trying to build on to bring more countries into it. And it's very clear that the Iranian regime has an interest in preventing this from happening, in increasing the level of incitement against Israel, and doing everything possible to break apart any partnership between Israel and moderate countries in the region. It's up to all of us to do as much as we can to pressure the Iranian regime so that it no longer has the means to terrorize the whole world. Thank you. Many on Instagram are asking about the hostages. Are there any updates regarding recent rumors about the hostages? And are there any further updates regarding this potential ceasefire deal? The simple and easy answer is no. There are no updates on the hostages. There is no public information. We know virtually nothing about the whereabouts of the hostages in Gaza. As far as we know, 101 Israeli hostages remain in Hamas terror dungeons in Gaza. We don't know how many of these 101 are alive. We are operating under the assumption that a significant amount of them are alive. We need the whole world to increase the pressure on Hamas and Hamas's backers so that Hamas will get the message that it has no way out of this and that the hostages need to be released in exchange for the lives of the captors can be preserved and they can be exiled. That's what we need. We need as much pressure as possible on Qatar, on Turkey, on Iran, 
so that the Israeli hostages can come home. Thank you. On Instagram, Marjorie asked, how can Turkey continue to be a member of NATO when they're now harboring terrorists? And is there anything that can be done to sanction Turkey for this? This is a reasonable question. I just read today that the head of NATO will be traveling to Turkey for a meeting with his counterparts in the Turkish government and military. So I hope that the head of NATO will raise this issue with his Turkish counterparts and ask them, what are you doing? Why are the world's most wanted men finding potential safe haven in Turkey, which is a member of NATO? NATO is an alliance of Western countries. It was originally crafted in order to stand up against Russia, and it still remains the primary purpose of this alliance. But if Turkey wants to be as part of this NATO alliance, it means that if Turkey is attacked, then every other member of the alliance, the alliance is sworn by treaty to come to Turkey's defense. So I don't know how popular it would be in the United States, for example, if Turkey is attacked and the United States is compelled by treaty to defend Turkey, which is harboring Hamas leaders. There's only one place that Hamas leaders should be, and that is on trial for crimes against humanity. We need to keep raising this issue so that no one can ignore it. Thank you for that question. Thank you, Daniel. Well, this is our final question from YouTube. Sue asks, what can we do to encourage and support you all at the Israeli Citizen Spokesperson's Office? First of all, keep watching, keep sharing, keep telling all of your friends about what we're doing. We're a relatively new organization, and we depend on you for your support, for word of mouth, to tell people what we're doing so that they can listen and benefit from what we're doing. And if you really want to help, I ask, Please donate to the Israeli Citizen Spokesperson's Office. You can find links on all of our pages to our website, the YouTube description, Instagram. We can only do what we do with your help. Your help is essential. Every dollar counts. It allows us to do what we do and spread the word, fight for Israel, spread the truth. So thank you so much. This has been the live daily briefing of the Israeli Citizen Spokesperson's Office. I'm Daniel Rubenstein. Have a lovely day.